Hi there. What's up, you? Hello, everyone. Yeah, I just cannot do intros. <laughs> so, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some ID tips with you. So, if you haven't watched my IB results reaction video, then hi, I'm Adela, and I have done the IB. So my higher level subjects were maths, chemistry, biology, English B, and then my third level subjects were economics and Czech. And I got 43 points. I am remarking my economics, so maybe it's gonna go up to a 7, so maybe 44. I'm not sure, but I'll update you. I know it's pointless. I know it's not gonna change anything, but it's only one point away, so... I'm just doing it for my ego, okay? <laughs> so in this video, I'm only gonna cover the general tips to succeed in the IB, but I am planning on doing separate videos on individual subjects, which means that I'll share with you my IA or written assignment, then maybe share with you how I studied for the particular subject. I'm definitely gonna do one um, for chemistry and biology, maybe for maths if you'd like to see that, and maybe about my EE, because I did get an A for my EE, which I don't know how that happened. And also I'm gonna do like an IB Q&A. So if you have some specific questions, then please leave them down below as well. And without further ado, let's get onto the video. Finally, oh my God. So the first tip is very basic, but probably the most important one. And that is to stay organized. Oh my God, I cannot emphasize this enough. If you're not organized, <laughs> You're gonna be in trouble. You need to have a planner. Like, you cannot be organized if you don't have a planner. So my school actually gave us some planners, which I actually really like. Also, it's very important that you have organized notes. So for example, for chemistry, I would have this little binder for only one topic. And then once we finish the topic, I would put all the notes into this big guy right here. But you don't have to carry this whole thing to class every day or for every lesson you just carry this little thing so this is basically how i store all of my schoolwork as you can see i have huge binders right here and then folders right there i have one for biology chemistry and economics that's kind of where i put the past papers and maybe some textbooks and in these binders i kept all of my notes so this one was for chemistry biology maths and economics now the second tip is also so 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 important and that is to be your own boss. What I mean by this is do not allow the IB to control you, you have to control the IB. <laughs> do not do the work and assignments because you feel pressured by a deadline. Do the work because you know you need to do the work and basically try to create your own deadlines so you're ahead of the work. We didn't have almost any deadlines in the first year of the IB. But in autumn of the second year, we had a deadline every single Sunday and it was very hectic. So during the summer before year two, I did my extended essay, my maths I, my English written assignment, my personal statement, and what else? Like an idea of my chemistry I. And let me tell you, it saved me so much hassle during autumn. And then I was, I was so, free i had so much free time to actually study okay not so much free time no but like i had more free time than other people because i did it during the summer so if you can just do your extended essays or your ias during the summer try to do the homework that your teacher gives you the day you get it so what i would always do is after school i wouldn't go home i would go to a cafe or a library and after i finished all the small homework i would go home but of course if you have some extracurricular activities you can just do the homework the next day or something so make sure you're ahead of the deadlines and maybe set your deadlines a week earlier and pretend that the actual deadlines don't exist and just follow your deadlines so the third tip is do your cast as soon as possible just do it during the first year. Trust me, you will not want to do CATS during the second year. You'll just be exhausted from all the deadlines. So do your CATS the first year. And then you can just put one little entry in the second year to show your consistency. <laughs> so the fourth tip is understand. I cannot emphasize this enough. Just please do not... 
Did I just roll my eyes at everyone who memorizes stuff? Oh my god! Please do not memorize stuff. It's so bad to memorize it because then you don't understand it. Try to understand why things happen the way they do. For example, in biology, so much can be explained using chemistry or in chemistry, so much can be explained using maths, like for all the formulas and stuff. So just try to connect the knowledge that you have from different areas. It's not like every single topic is completely different. They're all based on each other, basically. For example, equilibrium is basically the same as kinetics but just a different scenario. All the things are connected and you have to understand how they're connected and why the things happen. You cannot have the mindset of like, whatever, I'll just learn it when we have the test. So what I'm saying is that it's so important for you to understand it and basically build this foundation that you can build more knowledge on top of. One of the reasons why I cannot stand flashcards is because you just memorize the stuff. So my fifth tip is Kind of cheesy, but do reflect. If you make a mistake in your test, just learn from the mistakes. Try to understand why you made the mistake and try to not do the mistake again. Also, keep your mind clear. So if you keep thinking about something, whether it's school related or family related or anything related, just write it down. So for example, last year my cat passed away and I kept thinking about it and it just distracted me so much. I wasn't focused, but once I wrote it down, once I wrote down my feelings, once I reflected on the situation, it just like disappeared from my mind. I think it's because you keep thinking about it to not forget it, but once you write it down, you're not gonna forget it, so you can forget it from your mind. So in the end, you'll just have a clear mind to fill with more IB stuff. <laughs> So the next tip is so, so, so important and that is to know your syllables. Girl, just know your syllables. Do not just study from a textbook because usually there's so much redundant information that you will not need to know. You know, just print out the syllables so you actually can see it and before a test or before the exam just go through every single topic point by point. Make sure that you're aware of everything they want you to know because the syllabus is there to guide you. So use the sabos as much as you can. Moving on, the from your booklet for sciences and maths is gonna be your best friend. Before writing a paper two, go through the formula booklet or the data booklet so you actually know everything they give you because there's some things that they don't give you and that you actually have to derive from these things. So just make sure you know what the formulas are and you know how to work with them. You want to be familiar with this and know where the things are or if they're even there. You don't want to sit in a test and be like, oh my god, where's the hydration enthalpies, you know? So the eighth tip is to get familiar with the mark scheme and to know what they want to hear. So for example, in mathematics, when doing induction, they always want to see the sentence saying if n equals 1 is true and n equals uh, k is true, then blah blah blah, then blah 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 blah, blah. you know what I'm talking about? Sure. If they ask you a three mark question, for example, in biology, and you write a whole paragraph about it, and if there's not the three keywords that they want to hear, you're not gonna get any marks. Also pay attention to the column that says like, do not accept this or accept either this or this. So just practice past papers and read the mark schemes properly. I'm gonna leave some links to IB resources in the description box down below. The next thing is do not just copy the textbook when writing your own notes. If you do wanna make notes, just make them as simple as possible. Also maybe look at some past paper questions and write down the keywords that they usually want to hear. So for example when you're making notes for chemistry about the mass spectrometer, look at some past paper questions about the mass spectrometer so you know what they usually ask you for and you include that in your notes. So as I was saying these are the notes that I made in class but before the exam I actually made even more summarized notes where it's basically just keywords. For example for kinetics it's only this long and for equilibrium it's only this long so simply do not just copy the textbook when making your own notes make sure that you understand it and you have it organized as you want it to be you know 
So my last tip is find a way to stay motivated. So for example, what I would always do is make some plans for Fridays so I had something to be excited for during the weekdays. Or also the same thing is with the cafe. I wouldn't go home unless I finished it. So that was also kind of motivational because I wanted to go home so I needed to finish it. Just set very small goals and always have something to be excited about at the end of the week. So yeah, that's about it. That's how I stayed motivated, stayed organized and studied for the IB. So again, if you have some questions for the IB Q&A, leave them down below. And also if you'd like me to film a more detailed video about a specific subject such as chemistry, biology, maths, econ, extended SAT, okay, and what else, English, Czech, I don't know, whatever. Just leave the suggestions down below. So if you're doing the IB or planning on doing the IB, let me know what subjects you're taking or gonna take. So yeah, have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon. Bye! I'm wearing this very short skirt and my ass is stuck to the chair.